couple accused of holding J.C. Dugard captive for 18 years will be back in court today. Philip and Nancy Garrido are charged with kidnapping, rape, and false imprisonment. And CBS News is learning more about their life behind bars. CBS News correspondent John Blackstone is in San Francisco this morning with more. John, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Jeff. Well, the court appearance this morning should be brief. Uh, Philip and Nancy Garrido, uh, basically a, a date will be set for their preliminary hearing. Uh, they're expected to be in court, but they're not expected to say anything. Uh, they've been kept apart in jail, and this will be the first time they've seen each other since their arraignment. CBS News is learning more about the Garrido's life since their arrest. Behind bars in the Placer County Jail, inmates have threatened Nancy Garrido with rape and murder. She's being kept in isolation for her own protection, as is her husband, Philip. She's every bit as culpable for all of the crimes that he's been charged with in every bit the same way. Sources describe Nancy as very lonely and say she spends her time reading the Bible. 30 years ago, religion was the reason Philip Garrido gave for not wanting to be transferred from prison to a mental health facility. Serving time for a 1976 rape conviction, he told a psychologist he wanted to stay in the prison to continue his religious studies. They completely took my bedroom apart. Meanwhile, investigators in the case have expanded their search to include some who did business with Garrido. Police removed DVDs, VHS tapes, and a computer from the home I of Jim and Siobhan Molino. Like Garrido printed business cards for their auto wrecking company. They went through my drawers, they went through my garbage, they went through, you know, everything personal. The Molinos say they knew Philip Garrido only through their business, but J.C.'s two daughters were photographed at their daughter's birthday party. Now, today, defense attorneys uh, may ask for bail for the Garridos, uh, but since Philip Garrido is uh, accused of kidnapping, uh, rape, and uh, imprisonment for 18 years while he was on parole, legal analysts say bail is highly unlikely. Jeff? Yeah, all right. CBS is John Blackstone from San Francisco this morning. John, thank you. Also joining us from San Francisco is Michael Cardoza, former prosecutor in the Bay Area. Mr. Cardoza, good morning to you. Good morning. So our sources tell us that Philip and Nancy Garrido have both been taken into these special isolation holding cells. How unusual is that? It's not unusual at all. With these type of charges, uh, they usually are isolated. You know, in, in a prison system, there is a certain code of morality, and this type of crime ranks at the very, very bottom. So it doesn't shock me. Either one of them have been threatened with death or the other type of things, the rape, um, whatever else they've been threatened with. The sheriffs in the jail there have to keep them apart from the rest. And even when and if they go to prison, they will have to be kept in isolation because that will be the big worry that someone will try to murder them. Quoting from an Associated Press article this morning here, uh, talking about uh, Philip Garrido, again and again he claimed to have found God to a woman he'd abducted and was about to rape, to the judge who sentenced him to 50 years behind bars for the crime, and later to business clients and neighbors in Antioch, California. Can we expect him to continue to talk about God as why he did this? You know, I've got to tell you, one would think quietly he may talk about that, but I've got to think that the attorneys in court are not going to let him, especially today, say anything. And then if and when they do get to a trial, if he were to testify, that's going to fall on deaf ears with jurors. They will turn off to that immediately. That type of talk gives him a right to do what he did. No, it will not be something that anyone, a judge or a jury, will accept. All right, Michael, more importantly, let's talk about J.C. What are you hearing about sure. how she's doing this morning? I, I hear she's doing great. Um, she has gone into psychotherapy. She has gotten together with her family. I've talked to some of the uh, police involved with that, and they say when they got together the first time, before going into the room, J.C. asked the police, please stay out of the room. Let me go in. Let me we meet with my mother and my family. Even the most grisly of police officers tried to steel themselves against what they knew would be very emotional, but they really didn't realize the depth to which it uh, went. They were touched to the person. Some had brought tears to their eyes. One of them said that they really were looking to get some sort of psycho help, psychotherapy help because of what they heard in the room. But to the person, they were proud of the job that they'd done. They were proud of the type of job they did to see this type of thing unfold. One of the officers a week or so ago went out to the place where JC was with her family 
and uh, with her little girls. And as he walked by, and, and he walked right by her, and he was asking other officers, where is she? Where did J.C. go? And they said, there she is. Yeah. And he right. go, oh, my God, you look like 10 years younger. You look radiant. You look just wonderful. So she appears, by all outward signs, to be doing very, very well. Well, that is certainly nice to hear this morning. All right, Michael Cardoza, former prosecutor in the Bay Area, we thank you for your time this morning. You're welcome.